We've been together for 16 years, married almost 14, and in those years we've been through numerous struggles from loss of jobs, injuries and hospitalizations to struggles with our oldest child. But the biggest struggle we have ever gone through is a struggle for control with God. Out of the 14 years we've been married, 13 of those as Christ followers, only four of those years have not been plagued with financial struggle. In 2012, I took a job that I thought was going to be life-changing, leading us to financial freedom. Making a six-figure salary was a dream come true. Night work lasting 70 hours plus. A week um, sacrifice. It was a sacrifice I was willing to make. As the years went on, I was not seeing the freedom that I wanted to see. We were still living paycheck to paycheck, often not tithing in fear that we wouldn't have money to pay our bills. In this time, I was really struggling with trusting God's word. I would pray Joshua 9 or Joshua 1 9 over myself at night in hoping for breakthrough. It says, I have not or have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Little did I know, all I had to do was open my hands and let go. While Carrie was working long nights, God was doing work in me. I could see the struggle my husband was going through and would try to strong arm him into tithing, saying, don't worry about the money. God's going to take care of us. This backfired as his fear and need to provide were stronger than his belief. With our family falling apart due to lack of time together and Carrie's health deteriorating, I knew something needed to change. With lack of sleep, the financial struggle, a family in unrest, my nerves were shot and I was taking it out on everyone around me. The enemy was using my weakness and I knew I needed to take back what I had given and stop believing the lies. This began our journey of allowing God to truly provide. After much prayer and discussion, Carrie took a job as a refuse truck driver, a garbage man, making 65% less than his truck driving job. We knew a lot of things would have to change in order to make it work. Letting go of everything that wasn't essential, including an expensive car payment, was our first step. Trusting that God would make our money stretch, we utilized the food pantry on Thursdays and said no to all extras. Although I could see God being faithful, I was still struggling to fully submit financially. As I was waiting for a permanent position to open up for me as a garbage man, I re-injured my shoulder, causing me to live in a constant state of pain. I was questioning my choices as I fought depression silently, regretting my job change. I'd gained a lot of time that I spent with my family, which was amazing. Our home life was stable. My relationship with my wife was better than ever, ever. But we were still living paycheck to paycheck, not knowing where all the money was going to be for, for where it was coming from for our bills. And I still feared not being able to provide for my family. 11 months after Kerry started his new job, I got a phone call from him in the middle of the day. He called to tell me he had been let go and no longer had a job. In the past, I would have freaked out. I would have gone into panic attacks and just like figure it out mode. But that's because I crave stability. <laughs> and for the last 11 months since he lost his, or since he took this job, I had already been kind of just holding on barely. Um, I braced myself for the onslaught of emotions, but what came over me was God's peace. I knew things were about to get much, much harder but I also knew in my spirit that things were also about to get really good. This is where it went. <laughs> we went from six figures to 65% less, bringing in to $1,000 a month in less than a year, or within a year. As I stood in the kitchen holding my wife, I heard God say, it's time to let go. At that point, I knew that I needed to fully give myself financially and all to him. We had nothing but God's promise to, 
to, prov- to provide. Matthew 7, 24, 25, which states, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the storms rose, the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fail because of his foundation on the rock. I knew in my head what we needed to do all along, but it was... (laughs) I knew what we needed to do all along. Oh, man. So I couldn't ignore it anymore. I made the commitment from that port, part, point excuse me, to give my first fruits financially and otherwise to God who is faithful to us. And this is where it got a little crazy. Our mortgage company reduced our mortgage by two-thirds through a forbearance program. So we went from $1,200 a month to $400. We were given a car after ours died. Random bags of groceries, cash, gift cards were all left anonymously on our front porches. (laughs) Our children's extracurriculars were sponsored and bills were paid, all without us asking. God took care of it all. We tithed, we gave freely, and we still had money in the bank. (laughs) $1,000 a month, that's all we were making. And it was miraculous. I've never felt more loved or seen, and all of our gods, all of our needs were taken care of by God and the generosity of our community. But God doesn't just care about our needs, he relishes in being able to fulfill our wants as well. So, yep. So, right before I had um, been let go from my job, we were planning our anniversary trip to Disneyland. So, the hotel was already paid for. We were planning on using my paycheck right before we were going to buy our tickets to Disneyland. And, obviously, that didn't happen because (laughs) three weeks before we were supposed to go, I was let go. So... Uh, after much urging from our family and friends, everybody just was like, you need to go anyways, make it a beach trip, get away, reestablish. So we're like, okay, all right, we'll go. As we get to the hotel, we walk in, it's full of Disney decor everywhere. So we're like smacked in the face. Checking into the counter, the lady is amazing. She's like, oh, will you be staying at, you know, as your stay here, you guys going to go to Disneyland? We're like, yeah, no. So we told her a brief version of our story of what happened, that we were just going to make it a beach trip, see some sights, and she assured us we'd have fun anyways. About two hours later, we're getting ready to go to dinner. We're leaving the hotel, and I receive a call from the hotel. And the lady on the phone says, it's the manager. She said that there's a problem with our reservation. Can you please come back to the front desk? Here we are freaking out after everything that, you know, has been stripped from us. We're like, okay, well, you ready to make the long drive home? (laughs) <laughs> we walk in to the um, lobby, and there's a bunch of staff members holding balloons, and they hand us a card with two Disneyland tickets in it. So God does get your wants. <laughs> Our trip was magical, obviously, and the whole way through the park, I just kept saying, I can't believe we're here. <laughs> it was just like the biggest blessing to be able to celebrate God's goodness with my husband in our favorite place. The past several months, have been, uh, we have been faithful in doing what God has asked us to do. We have Proverbs 2820 hanging in our kitchen as a reminder of the journey we have been through, and it says, a faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who hurries to be rich will not go unpunished. Going from having so much with nothing to show for it to having nothing but God's love, grace, and provision has proven that all you really need is just that, God. We know... There will always be trials, and there will always be hard times, but where are we putting our trust? We know what works and what doesn't, and I pray that we always be intentional with allowing God to do work in our lives and not the other way around. Thank you. So doing it my way in the beginning, making six figures, obviously was not the plan. Um, Now, after everything has crashed down and God has slapped me and woke me up into walking his path, 
Uh, recently, I was offered a job with the potential to make six figures again, and I know that we will get there again. So I could see it. It's his way this time, not mine. So thank you all for letting us share you guys.